Chapter 7 The Concert I felt terrible about the horse racing and was not sure what to do next. So I was surprised when, a few weeks later, Will told me about a friend of his who played the violin. He's playing in a concert near Stortford next week, he said, and passed me his friend's CD. He's given me tickets. You should go. I've never been to a concert, I replied. Well, I did go to see Robbie Williams, but that's not the same. I would feel strange going to a posh violin concert. Then you should go. It's always good to try new things, he said. I looked at the CD cover. I'll go if you come with me. He sat there silently for a few moments. God, you're difficult, he said finally. I remembered the horse racing, and this time I called first and checked that the concert would be okay for a disabled person. Yes, of course. You have the best tickets because you can sit at the front, a woman told me. We can even come and meet you when you arrive, if it helps. It took me many hours to decide what to wear. Finally, I chose a red dress that always made me feel good. Then I put a white scarf round my shoulders. Wow, said Nathan when I entered the room. Will looked up and down at the dress and smiled. He was wearing a suit, and with his shaved face and newly cut hair, he suddenly looked very handsome. You look great, Clark, he said. It took forty minutes for me and Will to drive to the concert. When we got there, I followed Will to the front. The people tried to be polite, but I knew that they were looking at Will, because people always looked at him. We sat down, and soon the violinists came out and started to play. Suddenly I felt the music going through my body. My skin felt strange and my hands were a bit wet. It was the most beautiful sound in the world. I looked at Will. His eyes were closed, and he looked like he was somewhere far away. While I was driving home, I kept hearing the violins in my head. So, you didn't enjoy it, Will said. I looked into the mirror and saw that he was smiling at me. I smiled back at him. I loved it, I said. Thank you. Thank you for taking me. I started to open the car door, but suddenly he said, Don't, Clark. I want to sit for a few minutes. I just want to be a man who has been to a concert with a girl in a red dress. I took my hand from the door. Okay, I said. I was at the running club. Patrick was jumping up and down in his new Nike T-shirt. I'm sorry I can't come to the pub this evening, I said. But I have to help with Will's pills and change his tube dressing, because Nathan can't come. Well, you'll have to come next week. He lifted his foot, then pushed it against the ground. We are going to talk about the triathlon, and you haven't told me what you want to do for your birthday next week. Mum's cooking a special meal, I said. 
Trina went to college last week, so Mum's a bit sad. She invited Will. I did not expect Will to come to my birthday meal, so I was very surprised when he said yes. My mother did not expect it either, and my parents went a bit crazy, moving the furniture around and worrying about the wheelchair. Dad even made a ramp for the door. I opened the front door at 7.30pm to see Will sitting outside in his wheelchair with Nathan behind him. Will was wearing a suit. Mum and Dad stood behind me as Will came into the sitting room. Then Nathan left us. Hello, Will, Dad said, touching Will's shoulder. It's good to meet you, finally. I'm Bernard, and this is Josie. I hope the ramp was okay. What will you drink? My mum smiled at him, and Will smiled back. Pleased to meet you, he said. I've got some very expensive French wine in my bag, Clark. You must have good wine on your birthday. As I took the bottle of wine from the bag that was hanging from the back of Will's chair, Patrick suddenly appeared at the front door. Hi. Sorry I'm late, he said. So, you are Will. Here, I'll open that, said Patrick, taking the bottle of wine from me. Then Will came to the dinner table, and we all sat down. Grandad was there too. Everyone began to talk. Dad was telling Will funny stories about me, and Will was laughing. But I noticed that Patrick was not saying much. And he kept looking at Will all the time while I was feeding him with a spoon. Stop looking, I thought. Later, everyone gave me presents. Patrick gave me a little blue ring. It was beautiful, but I did not like wearing rings. And I've got something for you in my bag, said Will. I went to his bag and found a small bag. Inside it were some yellow and black tights. Oh, these are wonderful, I said. Where did you get them? A lady made them for me, said Will. Tights, said Dad and Patrick together. They are the best tights in the world, I replied. They're the same as the ones you wore when you were small, said Mum. And Will and I both smiled. Will stayed for another hour, and then Nathan came back to get him. You're a lucky man, Will said to Patrick when he was leaving. She gives great bed baths. You didn't tell me that you give him bed baths, Patrick said later in the evening, when Will was not there and my parents were in the kitchen. I don't, I replied. He's joking with you, Patrick. Are you jealous of him? I'm not jealous of him, said Patrick. How can I be jealous of someone who is disabled? <laughs>